Okay, so we've got our nose cone on and we've got our spring in here. So let's go ahead and take a look inside here to see if we can figure out how we're going to mate this spring on the internals of this thing. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and use our section tool. So our section tool is up here in the top of our main view window, or our model space. It's the fourth in from the left hand side, it says section view. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and you can see that it has sectioned a part of my model. On the left hand side, I've got multiple options, down underneath section 1, that's about halfway down. I've got the far left one, which is, uh, and these are all going to be sectioning the model based on our environmental planes, unless something else is selected. So we've got our front plane, we've got our top plane, and we've got our right plane. So I'm going to go ahead and select right plane. Now you can see that it's fully cross-sectioned that. We can see our nose cone here. You can see the main body here and the spring back here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my green check mark now. And now you can see that we've got our whole part modeled. Now, one thing to remember about this section view is that this is not actually a feature. This is just a visual um, property that we've changed. So we have changed the physical property to, or the visual property to be able to only see half of it. The reason that I... Uh, kind of emphasize that is because we've got all these surfaces here right so we've got a face there a face here a face here those aren't really faces those are just sectioned end lines if I if I go back into my section view and I'm going to click on oh where is it keep cap color okay so I'm going to click that keep cap color say that five times fast and now you can see that those are shaded blue that's because those are those are the faces that this tool has actually cut. So we can't reference those in anything. Those are just visual changes where we can't actually mate things to those. Okay? So what we're in here to do is we're in here to seat this spring down inside our cup here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check out our spring. So our spring is our second one. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hover over some environmental things. Now it looks like this front plane here is pretty close to but not quite on the front of our part so this spring can go all the way down up until it hits our nose cone there so that's that's about where our nose cone is I'm going to shift it back a little bit now this one we're, we're doing pretty much by looks the way that uh, the is the way that this particular one runs now the reason that I'm aiming it on this one I'm going to give you guys a second to take a guess as to why I'm using this edge right here to actually judge if I'm impacting or not. Okay, so the reason that I know I can use that edge is because that edge is not shaded blue. Remember, the blue shaded edges are the ones that were cut by our tool. This edge is not shaded blue, so this edge is actually the original edge of our part. So what I can do is I can get that pretty close as long as I'm not actually impacting. You can see this gap right here, so I'm not actually impacting that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reselect my front plane and I'm going to go hit my mate tool. So now that I'm in my mate tool, I can select another plane for that front plane to mate to. I'm going to come down and I'm going to click on this face right here. This is that inside, uh, kind of that back edge, that nose cone cylinder. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see the spring has moved. That's okay, I expected the spring to move. Now, the reason the spring moves is because by default, it's going to put those planes coincident right on top of each other. I don't want them coincident. I'm going to come down here in my toolbar. I'm going to come all the way down to the distance mate. I'm going to click that. Now, you see the number on there. It's 0.43465555. That seems like a very random number, right? It's not a random number. That number is actually the exact number of the distance that I originally put in when I visually lined those up. So that gap that I put in there that I made sure that they weren't actually uh, impacting, now that gap is remaining there because it, it has moved it from coincident back to where I originally had it. Now, I can change that distance and I can make that distance anything I want. But in this case, I'm going to leave that because I want that to be close but not quite impacting. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my green check mark twice, accept the change, and now you can see that my spring even though it, it, it looked like it's kind of shifting around, but it won't move back. It won't move out of our little bore here. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and exit our section view. So to exit our section view, I'm going to come back up here to the very top where we pushed that button before, click it once, and that's going to 
exit the section view. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and put on the end cap on the back side of this thing. So we're going to come back up to our insert components button. Again, it's going to open up this folder because we don't have any files open. And we're going to click on end cap and hit open. Again, we're going to go ahead and click out here in our model space because we don't want it fixed. And now we can go ahead and mate this into our assembly. So this end cap, this little nub here is going to go into the bore. And then this face here is going to be coincident with this face. So let's go ahead and do those. First up, let's go ahead and put our coincident mate in. I'm going to click on this surface here. And I'm going to start using my S key with a lot of these now because you guys are starting to get to the point where you are knowing where tools are or at least that when I say to click on the tool, you know how to get there. So I'm going to hit my S key and I'm going to go to my mate tool because remember that S key is going to bring up a different set of tools in every single environment. This particular environment is our assembly environment. Therefore, it's bringing up assembly tools. So I'm going to click on mate. And it's going to ghost that. When that's ghosted, I know I can click my second one. And I'm going to click the bore. Now, again, remember, this is backwards, right? But that's not a big deal. In our quick access toolbar, we can hit the tool, the button third from the right-hand side, which is flip assembly. And there it's flipped it back. I can hit my green check mark. And this time, we're going to remain in our tool. I'm going to click on this inside face here on, our, um, on the cap. I'm going to rotate around. I'm going to click on this face here. All right green check mark let's go ahead and green check mark one more time to get out of our mate now with this one i'm not going to lock the rotation on this one because this one doesn't have any visual features to show that it's rotating so you really can't tell if it's rotating or not when i do that with this front one you can tell that because it's got these um i don't know if they're air channeling holes or what but it's like got those holes in there and so it's we're not going to do that uh, on the back one we're not going to bother let's go ahead and hit our section view again and make sure that our spring is properly aligned still and we can see that our spring is still internal to that bore it's not impacting the front or the uh, end cap or the front nose let's go ahead and exit that tool again and now let's start working on some of our external components so the first one that we're going to do let's go ahead and lay out the cover plates over our the arms on our modeled base here so i'm going to click on my insert components tool and i'm going to click on the what are those called cover plate so my first one's going to be the cover plate i'm going to hit open now here's the trick with this is each one of these cover plates is going to be a cover plate and a mirrored cover plate each one of these has two different locations that it's going to be on one's going to be on one side on the top the other one's going to be on the other side on the bottom because of that i want more than one inside my model space here so i'm going to go ahead and click on Actually, we're going to do this a little bit differently. We're only going to lay one in now that I think about it. So we're going to lay one in. So let's go ahead and click there to lay out our um, our top cover plate. Let's go ahead and toss in some mates here to be able to fully constrain this thing. So this is going to take three mates to fully constrain this particular component. The first one we're going to do is we're going to make this circle here coincident with this cylinder right here. So let's go ahead and click on one, enter our mate tool and click on the center one, on the second one. And then I'm gonna, if you look here, it did flip around upside down, so I'm gonna hit my change direction or flip mate alignment. And that's gonna flip my mate alignment, and then I'm gonna hit my green check mark. My second one that I'm gonna do is a coincident mate between this cylinder here and this cylinder right here. So I'm gonna click those two, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit my green check mark. So now you can see that whole thing is lined up, right? So now all I have to do is mate this here. That would be that top lip of our modeled, um, what is it, modeled housing. And then the bottom face of our cover plate. And there you go. That is the first covered plate. You can see why that worked is because we do have coincidence here and here. Now, coincidence mates in this case are a little bit um, scary. If you are off by even the fraction of an inch between those two centers, it will not be able to use a coincident mate. They must be exact diameter or exact dimensions, okay? So if you ever get that error on something you're specifically designing, check your distances, check your sizes, because you may have a misalignment in those. And th that misalignment, it, it doesn't allow for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit our mate tool. And now I need the bottom mirrored cover plate. So I'm going to go ahead and hit insert component. 
and then I'm going to go to mirrored cover plate. Hit open, click out in space, and now I'm going to do the exact same three mates, but this time I'm going to select the bottom face of this side, obviously, and not the top face. Okay, it did select the, uh, the right orientation this time, so that's nice. Select that guy, rotate down here, grab the bottom of this one. Now I'm going to pull down a little bit because i got to be able to get in here. Oh. Rotate around. Click the inside of this. And there we go. Okay. Hit our green check mark. And exit our tool. So now we've got our two caps here and here. So now, next up, let's do what... Um, we've already done this in, in part sketches and part... Uh, the actually creating parts in features. And that would be, let's create a, um, a mirror. Because we've got these two things, they're on one side, and these two things are going to be identical on the other side, right? So we could also do this, uh, we could have done this without having to put in like a mirrored tool or a mirrored part. But So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our tree here, and underneath the linear component pattern, uh, that's right, for some reason the mirror tool is underneath the pattern tool. I don't know why, but that's where it is. So we're going to click that, and all the way down here at the bottom is Mirrored Components. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our mirror plane. Now we're going to utilize our model tree over here in Model Space to do that. And the mirror plane that we want to use is the right plane in our overall modeled environment. So let's go ahead and click on that right plane. Now it's asking the components to mirror. So we're going to click on the top cover plate and the bottom cover plate. And that's all that we want is those two cover plates and the right plane for the mirror. We're going to hit our green check mark. Oh, it didn't like it. Oh, it threw them on the inside. That is not cool. So let's go ahead and edit that mirror a little bit. That is not what it was supposed to do. So we should have a couple options here. Okay, so it threw those down here on the inside. So in the cases that it does that, we've got options in our feature mirror that we can use. So up here, next to where our green check mark and our red box are, first of all, let me let me get you guys back into this. Um, in order to edit those features, it's exactly like editing a feature inside our um, our original uh, parts. Okay, so we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna come up to edit feature. All right, so in in the features, sometimes up here by the green check mark and the red X on the right hand side, you've got arrows. So I can click those arrows and it's going to give me different options to be able to change to modify where my components land. So you can see here, it's landed those components on the inside in some funky way. So I can go center mass, but for some reason that's, that's mirroring them with everything like kind of reversed-ish. So now if I go ahead and click create opposite hand version let's do boundary instead so it's done one of them okay so it's doing it by by part up here sorry it's been a while since i've had to do this particular part so it's doing it by part up here so i'm going to keep it on bounding box center and then i'm going to change create opposite hand version so i'm going to click on my mirrored cover plate one you can see that that did it on this top one I'm going to click mirrored cover plate one now, which is the one underneath it. I'm going to hit that create opposite hand version again. When I select that, it's going to do the same thing on the bottom. So now you can see that I've got opposite hand versions of each one of these components. When I hit my green check mark now, um, yeah, let's go ahead and change it. There we go. Now we have all four of our cover plates placed on our assembly. All right, and we'll end that uh, this particular clip with that. Go ahead and go on to the next video for more.